What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today we are going to plant one of my absolute favorite crops and it is the best survival apocalyptic crop of all time. Stay tuned. That's right folks, we are going to plant one of my absolute favorite crops today and that is potatoes. The reason that I love growing potatoes is because, well, we eat a ton of potatoes and you yield a ton of potatoes from a small amount of your potatoes. So, seems like a no-brainer, right? Before we begin, I just want to say that trying to find seed potatoes right now was nearly impossible. I definitely couldn't find any Yukon Golds. Everyone was either sold out of them or no longer had them in stock or was unable to get them in stock or whatever the issue was. However, I did find some seed potatoes at our local feed store. They had some in a bucket and there were a few that were just kind of rolling around on the floor that they gave me for free. Whatever. So this is what we're going to start with. We've got some that are good and ready to go. I believe these were bagged as Pontiac potatoes, uh, but I didn't know they were purple inside but we've got the purple ones. But then we've also got ones that aren't purple on the inside. This one here was just rolling around on the ground. I think this might actually be one of the last Yukon Gold potatoes they had. We're gonna see what happens. It's more of an experiment than anything, and I'm gonna see if we can get anything from it. Now what you wanna do with your seed potatoes isn't just throw them right into the ground. Now this one here, it's a small one, and it's got, you know, something happening right there. So we could put this in the ground. However, if you've got a bigger one, say one that was all around like this guy, you want to cut it so that way you can find one of the eyes. Wherever there's an eye, that is a potential growth development. Technically, I've got maybe two going on here and I could cut that, but I've got plenty. So I'm going to put this in the ground anyway and see what we get. If you look online, there's all kinds of ways that people try and grow their potatoes. There's the trench and mound, which is a fantastic way, but we don't really have um, a space that we can do that in here in our little garden area. So what we're gonna do is three types of container gardening. One is gonna be in the five gallon bucket. So we'll talk about that. The second way is in our potato growing boxes, which I had built a couple years ago. They were an easy build. Don't love the design of them, but they work. They've been holding up well, and we're gonna to continue to use them until they completely rot out, and then I'll try something different from then. And the third way we're gonna do it is in a smart pot. This is a 10 gallon fabric smart pot from Bootstrap Farmer. Uh, these are fantastic, not only for potato growing, but your tomatoes or anything that you kind of want to put in a pot and allow the roots to air prune. They're fantastic. They work great. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend them for all kinds of different growing. If you'd like to check these out, I'll put a link in the description below for Bootstrap Farmers uh, smart pots. Get them. I guarantee you, you're gonna love them. Before we begin planting, what we need to do first is prepare our soil. Now, potatoes require a very loose soil, and especially since we're gonna be growing in containers or our growing boxes, we need to make sure that all of our soil is very loose and we can get some good growing going on in there. If it's too compact, you will not get a good solid potato. This is an example of potatoes, or sweet potatoes actually, that I tried to grow and I didn't focus on the soil as much as I should have and it was too compact and well they didn't yield what I was hoping they would yield. We got lots of them but they weren't very uh, fruitful. Our dirt is a mixture of some soil again that we have harvested on the property uh, because we can't get dirt anywhere else right now. It is some compost that is broken down really well and also a little bit of perlite uh, we don't want too much perlite because we don't want to retain too much moisture, but we want a little bit in there just so we have some moisture retained. You'll see that my shovel broke, but it makes for great work in turning the soil here and mixing it up. There are some clumps in it, and these are okay only because they break up when you, when you push on them. If you've got stuff that isn't breaking up, that's the stuff you don't necessarily want. But this stuff here, very nice and light, runs right through my fingers. We are gold here. 
We're gonna start with our five gallon bucket first. In order to prepare our pots to have these potatoes in them, we need to drill drainage holes on the bottom. Now, all of these buckets that I have here already had some holes in it for uh, other plants, but the bottoms didn't have any holes, which was never really a good idea. And the holes that might have been in here that were on the bottom were just too small. So we're gonna drill holes in the bottom for drainage, and then we can start putting some dirt in. Robbie is going to be helping us with it. When we put the holes in, you just wanna make sure that they're spaced really well and that there's no plastic left in the holes. We'll peel all that plastic out. What you're gonna do is just drill a hole and go in like a circle. So I have one there, I'll go one here, I'll go one here. So you can see you have three going across. And you know, I got that. Okay. okay. fill up to about here with our loose soil, put the seed potato on top, and then we'll bury it about another, eh, maybe like five to six inches of dirt, and we'll leave it alone after that. It'll start to grow up, and when it does, then we'll mound it up the rest of the way to the top, so that way this area from here down is where our potatoes will actually grow. The roots will come out and they will form potatoes and that is where we'll get most of our plant. Everything will be underneath the surface. Once we start to get towards the top, I'll probably stop around the, the lip of this bucket and then I'll mulch the top of it just to retain some moisture and they don't dry out very fast. This potato here is all nice and hardened off, scabbed over, however you want to call it. It's got a nice little growth on it. So we'll put it in the bucket and then we'll bury it with some dirt. We'll do this to each one that we're gonna put in the pots and then set the pots out where we need them and we'll wait to see what happens. Now we're gonna move on to our fabric pots. I have three gallon, five gallon, and 10 gallon. With the five gallon, we can get one seed potato in there and we should be good. With the 10 gallon, I could probably squeeze about three in there I'm only gonna put two in there because I haven't tried more than two just yet. I just know that I've had room for more than two. We're just gonna keep the two in there. I mean, if I'm putting one and a five, logic would tell me two and a 10, right? I wouldn't go more past the 10 if you're gonna use these, just simply because they're heavy. And if you have to move them, it's gonna be really hard to move. If they're just gonna stay in one spot and you're not really worried about it, then have at it. But these are fantastic if you're gonna put them out on your deck or on your porch or out in your front yard, whichever. And you know, you if you need to move them, you can move them. That's another benefit of these fabric pots, which is exactly why I use them. Where these fabric pots are gonna be are just here in our garden. It's more or less because uh, it's one less plastic pot I need to have in our garden area, and I don't need to build another box. I've got a 10 gallon bucket bag right here. Don't need to make any more boxes. No more making boxes. Same thing applies here as the five gallon bucket. I'm only gonna fill it up to a certain height, probably about three inches, four inches. Then I'll put in my seed potatoes right on top. I'm not even gonna push them down. And then I will mound the dirt on top. Now what's nice about these fabric pots is I can fold them over like that and as the foliage starts to grow, the foliage can get a little bit more light than it would have gotten before. And then when I go to fill it back up or mound over, I can just lift that back up. In these 10 gallon smart pots, I'm gonna plant the random Yukon Golds and see what we end up with. I am gonna put three in here because I don't know if they're actually gonna grow or not. If I get lucky, I guess we've got an experiment on our hands. And if not, then I've got a smart pot filled with dirt. I'm gonna fill it all the way up to the top of where I bent it over. And that's why I bent it over ahead of time before I carried it and put it in place because I wanted to know exactly where I wanted my fill line to be. All right, great. That one's all done. We'll take that over and put it with the rest of our potatoes. 
Our final way that we are going to plant our potatoes is in the potato growing boxes that I had built. If you're interested in building these boxes, I'll put a little link up here you can click on and also in the description so that way you can try and build your own. If I can make any suggestions at all, it's that you modify the design a little bit. I got the design out of a homesteading book and copied it. I don't love it. The uh, corners break off a little bit, but you can modify it, make it a little bit stronger. You can even screw them together so that way uh, they're a little bit more stable. But like I said, they're working and I'm not going to complain about them until they rot out and then I'll make new ones and I'll make up a new design. This is the first of three of our potato growing boxes and I filled it up with all kinds of compost, dirt, uh, manure in the bottom layer. Now the bottom layer is really just because I'm trying to improve the soil as it goes down. I'm not really looking to grow my potatoes in that soil there. This actually might compact a little bit more than the, the potatoes like. So what will happen is I'm going to fill this first layer up with our dirt that we can set the seed potatoes right on top of. Then I'll put the third layer in, and that will actually be our growing mounding layer. Now what's cool about these boxes is I can get about probably four to five potatoes in this box, if not maybe six. We're only going to put five in here and see what happens. I'll put one towards each corner and then one in the middle. Now I can fill this layer with dirt. I'm not going to fill it up the entire way. I'll fill it up about halfway. That should give me plenty of room for to bury the potatoes and get them started. Plus I gotta get more dirt. One thing you can do that would help the potatoes grow, it depends on the pH of your soil. They like a pH around 5.5, so if you have a way to test it, you can test it. Otherwise, you can put a little sulfur agent to uh, decrease the pH and bring the acidity up. They like a bit more of a, a acidic soil than most. Potatoes are considered a pioneer plant, meaning if you've got some undesirable soil, you can kind of get potatoes to grow in it before you might get another crop to grow in it. Pretty cool stuff. All right, that one's ready to go. I've got all of our potatoes planted. I've got all but one potato box planted. I actually think we're gonna use that box for something else, which is actually pretty cool because I think we've got enough potatoes planted at this point. I cannot wait to see what pops up out of the ground and then later on this year, finding out uh, just what kind of a harvest we got. These are 100 and 110 day potatoes, so be sure to keep checking in to see how the harvest comes out. This video is actually a part of a collaboration with Copperhead Road Homestead and Bigfoot Farmer, so make sure you check those videos out as well as mine. I'll have the links below in the description. There's all kinds of stuff down there, so make sure you check it out. Also, if you're planting something, then do me a favor. It'd be awesome if you could all get involved and use the hashtag favorite plant with whatever you post, whether it be a video or something on your Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is that you like to use. But it would be great to see what you all share as your favorite plant. Belle, what's your favorite plant? Huh? What is it? Tell me. Everyone wants to know, what is your favorite plant? Anyone? Anyone? How about you two, you little squirts? What are your favorite plants? Are you too attached at the hip? You never leave each other. How about these ducks? I don't grow slugs, just so we're clear. 
Okay, folks, thank you very much for hanging out with me today, planting some potatoes, the best and number one survival crop, apocalyptic crop, whatever you want to call it. We're going to have some taters, and I'm super excited about that. Come back and check out my taters. <laughs>